Only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. This wonderful quote by Albert Einstein says all about the great teacher, leader, architect of preschool educational reforms, Professor Dr. Ram Joshi, who was a great educationist as well as the former principal of SIES College of Arts, Science and Commerce. We have all gathered here once again to pay our respects to such a wonderful and dedicated teacher and leader on his 24th death anniversary. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome our chief guest, Ms. Farita Lambe, co-founder and trustee of Pratham, former vice, Prin uh, vice principal Nirmala Niketan College of Social Work, Shri P. Setu Raman, Vice President SIS Institute and respected members of the Managing Council, Dr. Uma Shankar, Principal SIES Art Science Commerce Science, Ms. Kalyani R. Mugam, Principal SIES High School Matunga, Ms. Meenakshi Sriram, uh, Headmistress SIES Preschool Matunga, members of our sister institutes members of other esteemed institutes, family members of Professor Ram Zoshi, who are watching this program online, teachers, students, one and all present here, and all those who are watching this program online. I welcome you once again on this August gathering. The program now begins with this beautiful rendition on Ma Saraswati by Ms. Radha Bhatt our postgraduate diploma in guidance and counseling student. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya 
चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम वक्रतुंड महाकाय कोटिसूर्य सभ निर्विघ्न कुर मे देव सर्वकार्यु सर्वदा या कुंदेन्दु तुषार हार धवला या शुभ्र वस्त्रृता या वीणावर दंड मंडित करा या श्वेत पद्मासना या ब्रह्माच्युत शंकर प्रभृति देव सदा पूजिता साम पातु सरस्वती भगवती निशेष There's a very small Saraswati prayer here. Let's meditate on it. Surmai Veena Dharini Saraswati Kala Nidhan Pavan Ashish Se Kar De Jan Jan Ka Kalyan विद्या बोध स्वरूपिणी मन मोहक तेरा रूप हर ले निशा अज्ञान की ज्ञान की दे कर धूप देवी ज्ञान विज्ञान की कष्ट हरण तेरा जाप तेरे उपासक को छुए कभी ना दुख संताप कला निधि करुणेश्वरी करुणा कर दे अपार कला कलेश न हो यहाँ सुखमय हो संसार श्री नारायण की प्रिय प्रीत की पुस्तक खोल पीड़ित पा जाए शांति वाणी मनोहर बोल बुद्धि और विवेक का दे सब को उपहार सर्व कलाओं से मैया भरे तेरे भंडार परम योग स्वरूपिणी मूढ़ता मन की हर सर्व गुणों के रत्नों से घर साधक का भर कला में दे प्रवीणता जग में बढ़ा समान तेरे अनुग्रह से बनते अनपढ़ भी विद्वान तेरी अनुकंपा से होती प्रतिभा का विकास ख्याति होती विश्व में जीवन आता रास स्मरण शक्ति दे हमें जग के सिर जन हार तेरे कोश में क्या कमी तुम हो अपरंपार जय जय सरस्वती माँ जय हो सरस्वती माँ जय जय सरस्वती माँ जय हो सरस्वती Thank you, Radha. 
for the melodic inv uh, invocation song. I now request Dr. Uma Shankar, Principal SIES Arts Science. Uh, Arts, Science, Commerce, Science to formally welcome our chief guest. Good morning, uh, respected chief guest for the day, Ms. Farida Lambe, Vice President of SIES, Mr. Setu Raman, Director of IES, Dr. Vidya Satish, Mr. S. Vishwanathan, Mrs. Uh, Kalyani Aramugam, <coughs> Meenakshi Sriram from SIS School, our own Vice Principal, Dr. Dara Menon, my colleague, Dr. Deepali, invited guests, students, and uh, others who have joined for today's program. I also heartily welcome uh, Ram Joshi family members who have joined online. I heartily welcome each one of you for the most awaited September 14th, the Ram Joshi Memorial Lecture. Uh, students who are here seated may not have known about the the glory and uh, the kind of commitment with which he had stood here in this institute for a long tenure. He was a principal of this college, and after uh, after that, in eighty seven to ninety three, he s moved on to become the vice chancellor of the Mumbai University. During those time, was the passion that he had towards teaching, towards earlyhood education that he started off this entire program in our college and that's how we have continued that till till date fortunately or unfortunately i should say that in two ways i look at it we are associated with this man who stood in this institute for such a long tenure and uh, created wonderful memories for all of us unfortunately i was not a direct student of him but a uh, few incidents i can always recall which i keep sharing it with the joshi's family also is uh, Ram Joshi as, as a teacher, as a political scientist, as a wonderful administrator. And beyond all that, he was uh, a great human being. Uh, I could, just with uh, one or two incidents that I recall, I, I, I feel very blessed about it. Much later, when I joined this college in uh, 83 as a young teacher, uh, there was a new paper that was introduced in Mumbai University and that was called The Gandhian Studies and uh, relevance of Gandhi in something like that. So since it's a new teacher, it was given to me as a paper, as an applied component. So very eagerly with a lot of enthusiasm about it, I went to the library, picked up a lot of books and I was reading it. So suddenly one of the days, uh, librarian Leela Jose those days called me and said that, Uma, please return that book that you have taken yesterday because uh, Ram Joshi sir has come to the college. I said, it's okay. I said, who is he? If he wants to read Gandhi book, I'm also reading it. I need it for my lecture. Then he came down and Dr. Joshi said, I just wanted to see such a young girl trying to read such a voluminous work of Gandhi. So I wanted to know who is reading this book because these are the books never touched by the other people. And therefore, I'm so elated that your daughter, that I told him that uh, this is a new paper and therefore I was reading it. Of course, I shared the book with him. I came to know at that time that he has been a PhD guide for the international schools across. And there are at least three or four students across were doing PhD on Gandhi and he was the uh, supervisor for them. I could imagine the amount of uh, uh, commitment with which he was working on the other side uh, academically, even though he was uh, much later in his life. And after that, of course, I did not get an opportunity and uh, could not uh, do it. So at SIS, the one of the best way that we can always pay homage to such great men who have contributed so much, who have led, the, led us to a greater path, lit the lamp that is still brightening up our lives for, uh, for long years. That's because of such people who have occupied such great post. And therefore, at SIS, the best way to do it is we pay homage to them. So in the last 23 years, except for the COVID year, we have been inviting wonderful people who have contributed in the field of education, who are also ready to share their expertise. And we are all here at all times as good learners. And therefore, today we have Farida Lambe, who is, go, is also associated earlier with Nirmala Niketan and later on with Pratham. In a short way, in the last few years, we are also associated with Pratham. That's what I was sharing with her, that some of our degree college students are doing internship with Pratham and they are contributing a lot to it. And they, it's a kind of a learning experience. And when we reach a particular stage and we meet such kind of people who are doing different kinds of work 
and after covid when we have learned lot many lessons it is not always a learning that is going on there is always a lot of unlearning also going on and these are the times when we meet such wonderful people that we learn to learn a lot of things and unlearn be a bit of it which is not required and completely reform and rejuvenate ourselves with such experts thank you so much for accepting our invite and i'm looking forward to your lecture and once again on behalf of sis i welcome each one of you today present for the ram memorial joshi ram joshi memorial lecture thank you thank you uma ma'am may i now call upon my colleague ms bhakti to say a few words about professor professor dr ram joshi good morning farida ma'am uh, all the members on the dais my dear students and the guests who are invited i would like to talk a few things about professor ram joshi he was a noted academician he was the principal of sis college of arts science and commerce for 18 long years and he was associated to the college since the time uh, of its inception he was the former vice chancellor of university of mumbai between 1977 to 1983 he served the cause of education with de devotion exemplary professional abilities and competence with his with his stewardship the sis college of arts science and commerce became a center of excellence in higher education uh, from the start of its inception his expertise innovations and knowledge were of immense help in formulating the right strategies that would help college teachers and students he was awarded the d lit in 1982 by the osmania university of hyderabad and was the professor emeritus at yashwantrao bosle chavan maharashtra open university professor ram joshi like ma'am said had an aura around himself his brilliance and his ability to make complicated things very simple for his students made him a student friendly teacher students of professor ram joshi remember him as a professor who taught with a lot of passion he had exemplary oratory skills and would transport students to another plane his students would consider him as a special teacher who taught beyond the books early childhood education was very dear to professor ram joshi he was the architect of preschool reforms and he suggested a lot of changes in the preschool and primary uh, section and this was uh, something that had gained wide attention during those days he spearheaded the movement called as bal shikshan parisar he pioneered education system that made education fun for all the tiny tots a crusader for playway method he formulated several ways of reaching changes in preschool education professor ram joshi shared his mortal coil on 14 september 1998 in perpetuating his memory the sis organizes annual lectures on various topics the pandemic did not deter our enthusiasm and we held the ram joshi memorial lecture in the online mode also professor ram anujam visiting professor of uh, azim premji university bangalore preceded the 24th ram joshi memorial lecture on uh, the topic from nep 2020 to the science and math classroom before that the 22nd ram joshi memorial lecture was preceded by dr nandita choudhary consultant and former professor of university of delhi on the topic finding our way back to the school reflection on post colonial possibilities in the field of ece much of the present educational efforts of the south indian education society are devoted on these themes and hence it is fitting that we honor him today in solemn remembrance we have ms farida lambe who will be preceding the 24th ram joshi memorial lecture today and to introduce farida ma'am uh, i would like to call uh, dr vidya satish director of sis institute of comprehensive education sayan and nerul a very warm welcome to our distinguished chief guest ms farida lambe our vice president shri seturaman 
Dr. Vishwanathan, our managing council member, um, principal of SIA school, Ms. Kalyani, Ms. Meenakshi Sriram, head of the pre-primary, our vice principal, our principal, Dr. Uma Shankar, I don't consider her separate because we are always together in, in this activity, Dr. Uma Shankar, um, Dr. Tara Menon, vice principal, and Dr. Dipali, and uh, invited guests, my team, students of SIS College, as well as students of SIS Institute of Comprehensive Education, uh, and all the viewers on YouTube, the family of Dr. Ram Joshi is watching on YouTube. So my humble pranams to each and every one of you. Uh, good morning to each and every one of you. Today is indeed a special day for all of us at SIES. At the outset, I would like to extend my gratitude to Farida ma'am for graciously accepting our invitation. She is such a busy person that one phone call and she said, yes, I will accept the invitation. She's a very, very busy person. Her schedule is, you know, can't catch her because she is traveling. And in fact, yesterday when we connected, she was uh, at Jaipur, just going to board the flight to Mumbai. And uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for sparing your time and being here with us. It's really an honor to have you with us. We had attended a program in February of this year organized by Vipla Foundation. Uh, on education and uh, we met um, Farida ma'am there and my team and I decided that we must invite her to SIS and what better than the Ram Joshi Memorial Lecture. As uh, Uma ma'am said, this memorial lecture is organized by SIS Institute of Comprehensive Education and SIS College of Arts, Science and Commerce jointly every year uh, to commemorate the life of one of the greatest educationists this city, rather this country has ever seen, Professor Ram Joshi. While we organize many educational programs as an institution, this lecture is very special to each one of us. Topics related to education, as Bhakti read out, uh, are dealt, and there is always a lot of learning for each and every one of us. There will be take-home points after we listen to the lecture by experts year after year, and I'm sure today also is going to be no different. I consider it an honor to introduce Ms. Farida Lambe to you all. Ms. Farida Lambe is the co-founder and trustee of Pratham. And Pratham, as we all know, is synonymous with quality in education. To conceptualize, grow, and develop an organization like Pratham, this is not an easy task, we all know. She is a change agent. Somebody who uh, born and brought up in Mumbai, a complete Mumbaikar, and when you read her bio data, you will understand that she is a person who wants to give back to the city that has raised her. Ms. Lambe received her master's degree from Nirmana Niketan College of Social Work, and after finishing her education, she started with the municipal school project for Nirmana Niketan College of Social Work. This eventually led to the inclusion of social workers in the municipal corporation structure. So this development at that time seemed actually unthinkable. And this was the first indication that of her ideology, her ideology that advocated best practices in education, best practices into legislation and working with the government. The highlights of her vast career has been uh, holding her respected position as vice principal of Nirna Niketan College of Social Work and uh, where she was very endured by her staff and her students. Uh, in fact, um, Vidyanand Joshi, the nephew of Professor Ram Joshi is your student, ma'am. And Mrs. Joshi immediately wrote to me saying that Vidyanand is uh, her student. And uh, today, because of work commitments, they're all watching it online and they could not make it today. After that, she started with the NGO Pratham in the year 1994, and it has grown to such a great height that it has received the CNN IBM Indian of the Year Award 2010 because of visionaries like her in leadership. Through Pratham, she swore to ensure that every child is in school and is, in le and is learning well. She's a strong crusader for education as well as child labor. And um, she has worked for the field of child labor to avoid so that in Maharashtra, it started there and then she's expanded to the country and she heads the Pratham Council for Vulnerable Children. She's been appointed as a member of Maharashtra State Commission for the Protection of Child Rights in recognition of her experience and her expertise in this area. The variety of causes that she has devoted herself reveals her dedication as a social activist. 
Prerna is an organization which we all know, working for prostitution rights in Kamatipura. Yuva is a group tackling numerous social challenges with the help of young people. And there are many other initiatives that she has spearheaded. She has worked uh, substantially whenever there was a natural disaster, whenever there was a problem, whenever there was a riot, starting from 1992 Bombay riots to Orissa flood to 26-7 till the COVID-19 epidemic. She has participated in so many um, state and national committees, Sarva Siksha Abhiyan Committee, State Security Council and others. Being an academic, she has attended so many national and international conferences and has a number of publications to her credit. COVID, we all know, we've been speaking inside also with her, has affected children and women, children to a very great extent. A girl, child, uh, there are dropouts, boy children having to join the workforce because they need to support the family. Young children with malnourishment because they did not get the nutritious noon meal which they were getting. We know the problems which children faced. So Pratham team under her leadership responded to this crisis situation. They did a lot of work in the community and they connected with children. They connected with families through WhatsApp, through various messages, through radio programs. And till date, educational material is sent to the children and to the parents. They focus a lot on parent engagement and community mobilization. They even take care of the 30% of children who do not have access to internet. So they, their volunteers go and see to it that educational guidance is given to such children. Pratham, under her able leadership, has impacted the life of 1.7 million people. About 13 lakhs pre-cooked meals were given, 26,000 rations and safe, safety kits were provided. And one of the most vulnerable sections the migrant workers, they were also taken care of and they were also given long-term assistance through the social protection services. Ms. Lambe has worked tirelessly with Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai on relief, on education. She collaborates with UNICEF, with the state governments and has been a pivotal change agent in the policies related to children. Now, this indomitable spirit to serve the needy, coupled with all the extraordinary efforts, could not go unnoticed, isn't it? Her valuable contribution has been recognized and the results are the awards that she has won. The Social Justice and Peace Committee Award, the Best Teacher Award presented by Municipal Corporation and most recently the Ahalya Bai Holkar Award presented by the Maharashtra government. I think she deserves a big round of applause. And uh, the icing on the cake is another award the Keto Award 2020 Best National NGO of the Year. Ma'am, we wonder whether you also have the 24 hours that we have. And um, she's saying like this, but such a humane individual, a, a person with so many qualities, dedication, humility. She's made herself what she is today and she's made the institution also what it is today. I'm sure she tells herself every day, there are miles to go before I sleep. There are miles to go before I sleep. Hence, it is befitting that we have a person of such caliber to deliver the 24th Professor Ram Joshi Memorial Lecture today. I thank once again Ms. Farida Lambe for being here with us. And I kindly request the members on the dais to felicitate ma'am before she begins with the memorial address. Thank you, Vidya, ma'am. Uh, may I now call upon Seturaman, sir, to please hand over the plant to our chief guest. I now request Uma Ma'am to felicitate our chief guest with the shawl. I once again request Setu Raman sir to felicitate our chief guest with the fruit basket.
May I now call upon Dr. Vidya to felicitate our chief guest with her sketch made by a student from postgraduate diploma in guidance and counseling course, Ms. Mona Shah. Without any more delay, I would now like to call upon our chief guest, Ms. Farida Lambe, co-founder and trustee of Pratham, former vice principal Nirmala Niketan College of Social Work, to please deliver the memorial lecture on Is Education a Right to Schooling or Right to Learning too? Good morning to everybody. Uh, I'm completely overwhelmed. Uh, one, by the uh, warm hospitality and all the gifts that have come my way, and especially the check, uh, the, uh, the sketch, which looks better than me. So, uh, having said that, uh, I'm extremely happy, and I think the reason I said yes to uh, Vidya immediately was uh, the cause and this is the memorial lecture and I feel extremely privileged and a little humbled that I have to talk on the occasion of Professor Ram Zoshi whom who I was not a student but as a young faculty I have seen him worked with him when he was a vice chancellor of Mumbai University so it's a it's a it's a coincidence actually and another piece of information that i want to share with you is that 92 93 were the riots of mumbai and that's when professor ram joshi took over as the vice chancellor and as college of social work nirmala niketan we did a lot of work with the riot victims both hindus and muslims and uh, it was like thinking out of the box that the College of Social Work and there was a curfew in Mumbai, but the College of Social Work decided that we will give say 15 days off to the uh, to the college students to do this work. And we had to take the permission of Professor Ram Joshi. And I still remember that myself and some of our management people went to him and we said we are going to We've come to you for this permission. And he said, you don't need my permission because this is what one is expected. So I'm very proud that you're all doing this. So I still remember. And uh, after after the vice, at the, you know, in the meetings, whenever we attended, I was a part of the academic council. So he had this, I won't say a bias, but he was very, he had this positive discrimination in favor of women. He always felt that women faculty, women lecturers must be given, uh, I'm not talking about privileges, but certain uh, stereotypes which were there in 91, 92, 93, 94. Uh, how do you really break those myths? And therefore, he introduced some courses, whether it was, you know, women's studies, and I won't say he introduced it alone, but the entire team. But when you when you have a leader which is a, uh, who's a visionary, I think the team... Um, also responds uh, uh, favorably. Another uh, you know, experience that I remember about him is that he is also became the education minister. And many of us were very happy that, you know, a person like him, who's, who's been the vice chancellor, who uh, looks at education, is also the education minister. So we were also looking at uh, aspects where education reforms were brought in. And rightfully enough, he was able to actually steer that for a short time because he himself decided that politics is not for him. You know, it is the academics and education is for him. And I think people in this uh, room 
didn't know him but if you have read read about him and all the things which were said about him you will understand why he said very gracefully that this is not for me but you know uh, academics is for me and i think therefore i feel i felt very privileged when vidya rang me up and this came just out of the blue this beautiful mail that she sent and i just said yes i'm coming okay uh, having said that uh, sis is a college um, i've almost grown up with it and i was telling uh, uh, dr uma and your vice president that i i didn't grow up with sis college but i've grown up with guru krupa restaurant so guru krupa and sis college almost go together uh, so I, i always felt very close and a lot of my colleagues a lot of my people whom i know have been a part of sis so and what is good for you good i think i want to congratulate the principal and the entire management committee and the faculty that you've kept up the glory of this institution it's very very difficult that you can bask in the past glory but to maintain the legacy to maintain the values maintain the culture and of course it is expanded okay from where where we knew what you are right from schools to everything it's not an easy task and you really need good leaders so I really congratulate all of you for maintaining this the values that professor ramjoshi led before us uh, and another thing which and i'll come to my topic that professor ramjoshi did which in those days was not a very we had not really thought of is how do you connect higher education to primary education how do you connect students in higher education to primary education in the sense that how do you connect universities to schools because once you come to the university once you are in ba or you know bcom you are doing researches but you are lost in your own world and you really don't look at what the other part of india or what the other part is doing and therefore he was able to actually formulate that that you know and he started in maharashtra if i'm not mistaken the pre school association the parishad uh, which is called the preschool in maharashtra which was not at all present there and now to your you you will be surprised and i'm 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 sure you're happy that the national education policy is talking today after so many years that preschool is the cornerstone or the pillar of education which professor ram joshi had envisaged in 94 96 so i really feel for all of you as students that you are very privileged to be a part of this institution and and i am sure you are carrying on this uh, legacy which this great man had started so i am truly humbled thank you vidya and the management to give me this you know privilege to be here and share my thoughts uh, thank you uh, vidyanand has been in touch with me and he's been one of my one of our star students so and one can see from where the spirit has come so it's all in the values and the uh, families and one always says wherever you go ultimately what works is how strong are your family uh, values and you hope one always does well uh, having said that when vidya talked to me about you know you can choose the topic now when somebody says that you can choose the topic i was a little scared ki what topic now to choose because i can talk about you know people going to the moon we can talk about um, you know the uh, the fast food or we can talk about uh, pathan uh, as a movie making uh, uh, waves or we can talk about the film industry it was open and i think vidya was smart because she knew whom she was talking to she knew that you know a person like me you know they say no mulla ki daud masjid tak so so i will only talk about education so she kind of tried to make me understand tell me that you have the freedom but actually she was saying that you know you must talk about education so thank you vidya for that uh, so we i really thought about it and uh, i said to myself and what what i have been doing is that can we reimagine education can we all also talk about education uh, as a right as a right to of children 
we talk about education as a right to children but actually are the children learning and i want to spend a little time on this for all of you some of you might know it but i think you must know what is the big picture can you go to the next year? yeah uh can you go to the next yeah uh basically when we when we are talking about issues what is about the issues of education uh all of you know that some of us okay 5% 10% 7% people in this country today are privileged to be in institutes like this okay to be a part of a higher education whereas there are 40% children who don't see beyond fourth standard or seventh standard right so the real issue today and i'll come to this but the real issue plaguing the country in the last 20 years ever since you know we i've been i've been in the sector for almost 35 years but the the real issue was that children who are even you know don't cross fourth standard so we used to have something like a dropout rate way back in 80s and uh, way back in 90s when some of you may not have even been born was about 28% to 30% so you had half the country's children not going beyond fourth standard okay so that was one issue now things have changed of course that ever since there has been progress now what you have is that there is 97% children who are in school which is a huge achievement for a country like us in the last 15 20 years we made huge stride that children are in school now when we say we it is not only we as pratham or any organization but it is basically the government of india you know prior to 2014 after 2014 i think what we've been able to achieve that children are enrolled in school but when you're saying children are uh, enrolled in school uh, are they really attending school is a question that you have to ask and actually you will be surprised that when you say enrollment is 97% the actual attendance is only 66% or even lower for example i'll give you that you go to a government school right next to you there are lots of government municipal municipal schools the enrollment register will be 45 or 50 children on the roll okay actually when you go to that class now you will see about 20 to 25 children attending the school and the best part is that not the same children attend every day right and uh, today they will attend tomorrow they will not attend school so basically average is about 25 to 30 so one has a question that where, where are these 15 children gone or 18 children gone so these are called the invisible children which i will talk about hmm? so it is not only the enrollment but now we as people as people working in education should know what you know why is why are children not attending uh, i was in bihar some time back and i was you know in bihar there is a place called sitamadi okay there is a place called purnia where um, you know there's lots of floods and every time there's a flood that gets disconnected from patna uh, i was in sitamadi and i was in school and there's a lot of girls walking around and it's a school time so i said ab school nahi ja rahe so those girls said didi man nahi lagta hai. okay didi man nahi lagta hai. i said okay i met another child boy very smart 11 year old i said aap school nahi gaye aaj school ki school hai na yahan pe so he said didi na hum hamara namankan hua hai like i mero mera naam gaya hai lekin main abhi tak pahuncha nahi hu okay so now you you get what they are saying so mai pahuncha nahi hu so my name is there <coughs> so you also have this kind of a feeling that children are enrolled but they are not attending another and we will come to uh, some of these factors in a while the other uh, issues which are of course socio economic factors which all of us uh, kind of know that um, children 
uh, who are out of school or who are dropouts also are from poorer families right they are from socio economically poorer families but it is not the single reason for them to drop out because i must tell you that poorest of the poor now whether in mumbai or whether you go in delhi whether you go to nasik whether you go to patna everybody wants their children to learn and where do they want to learn they want to go to english school okay so the maids in our houses will say ki mere bachche ko english school mein dalna hai and you ask them ki english school mein aap kyu dal rahe ho so they will tell you ki aapko to english achhi aati hai aapke bachche school mein jaate hain english school mein kyu nahi jao so the aspirations of the parents have, has definitely increased okay but what is happening is that many of these children who go to school are first generation learners they are not they are not part of a pre they were not a part of pre school program now things are changing but also many of them don't do well in school and just yesterday there was a article in times of india some of you may have read it that they have done studies in andhra pradesh and many places and it's nothing new that people or children drop out because of failure that they cannot cope with studies okay so many children drop out not because of the socio economic factors but because basically they can't do well so they are actually pushed out of the system okay they are not pulled into the system but they are pushed out of the system and i think so and many a times this problem with the school curriculum teachers is is an important um, cause also in the education system you see many of us our children also that there is a lot of preference over rote learning preference over you know learning all the time and we are really not dealing with problem solving skills we are not talking about a rational you know uh, 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 a a rational human being we are talking about okay you have this exam you have this is the topic teachers even tell you which are the main topics to read and you have the exam examination so it becomes very exam oriented this is generally with the education system but with much more poorer people, children that we have in in our in our in our system i think the problem is not only the socio economic issues but basically how how in how do they really get attracted in school uh another important aspect which i want to touch upon and which i think you will be interested is this entire um i won't say race but a competition between private and public education okay uh we all we all i in, i'm i mean i'm talking about myself i have been to a municipal school when i was a child when i was a student my brothers and sisters also went to a municipal school the reason why i went to a municipal school is not because i was poor hmm? my father was a uh, secretary in government and the place where we lived the school was very close so somebody like a professor ramzo she would say that it's a neighborhood school concept that you don't go to school very far away but go to a school which is very close to you so that you don't spend too much time in the community and that community which is there which is the captive community gets into that school so the school and community have a very good bond and a rapport understand so when we were in municipal schools we didn't think about she is poor and i'm you know i'm better off and therefore the public education system was a part of our constitutional responsibility and is a part of our constitutional responsibility right right from dr baba saheb ambedkar in the constitution it is said that that government or we shall endeavor to have primary education to every child below the age of 14 okay but it was not a fundamental right then it was in the directive principles yeah and in 2010 it became a fundamental right to education and therefore we have now children it is a basic human right a basic fundamental right for all children below the age of 14 to get into school right now when 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 it becomes a fundamental right whose responsibility it is it is the government's responsibility 
we as ngos or we as private partners will supplement the government efforts right but it is basically a government responsibility so the local administration runs these schools like municipal schools in the rural areas zilla parishad schools so it is there but in the in the last 15 years if you have noticed what has happened there is a sea change in the public education system and there is a lot of effort of many of these education systems getting privatized okay now some of us have are protesting some of us are not protesting okay but 10 years back i don't know if some of you might remember that there was a report on education and the system of education by who by mukesh ambani and i didn't really never understood why ambani is writing a report on primary education when you have people like us we are quite good okay but we were never called now when ambani is write a report on primary education what are you expecting right and and that is the effort which is happening now in the country and even in bombay for example even in other cities that the public schools are getting empty you know there's a there is a public school right here and there's a private school in the same compound and you'll be surprised i'm not exaggerating i was standing in nasik one day and i see this public school hardly any children and here there is no place for children to sit even in mumbai you have private schools and i'm not talking about sis schools i'm not talking about uh, i'm not talking about uh, uh, a scottish school i'm not talking about arya vidya mandir okay i'm talking about even in bombay everywhere there's something called a low cost affordable schools and which are these low cost affordable schools they are in the slum Hmm? we work very uh, closely in chembur and all these places so you will have a rose high school okay you have an anthony school hmm? so private name rose okay um, uh, lotus now people get very attracted but if you see the room space it's 10 by 10 and 50 children are there and teachers mind you some of them are not trained and if some of them are trained they get very less salaries because it is privately managed privately funded there is no government aid hmm? and this is really the the it's a big problem today in the city and in very places that private there are lots of private players coming into public education system and you may completely disagree with me but i really feel that if we allow primary education to be privatized where will the poor go okay how will they afford uh, education and fees today the municipal corporation of mumbai it gives 27 items free their budget per child is something like 52000 per child per year you can imagine because the teachers are extremely well paid the teachers are the cream uh, in terms of their academic performance is concerned okay and they are very well paid and yet you have children not coming to the school so somewhere there's a disconnect between what you are posing what you are doing and how parents are perceiving and what parents want today is good quality education and they really don't mind spending you will have lots of people i'm sure you know them lots of mates lot of people who will make who will go to five houses for bartan for uh, cooking and they'll say mere bacche ko mujhe padhana and you feel very sad that bacche ko padhane ka itna passion parents mein hai but when they go to these schools they have to say nahi ho raha hai तो भी बच्चा बाहर आओ और कुछ हुनर सीखो हुनर यानी सम स्किल एंड दैट्स हाउ इन बिहार बट इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्स टू थाउजेंड सेवन दिस सिटी हैज हैड 
45,000 children who were in labor, child labor. Okay, right in your backyard, there are slums where you have children working in sweatshops. Okay, below the age of 14, getting nothing. Okay, and they do this jardosi or embroidery work, and they they make the money. And and when you ask them, "Ab kyu aaye Bihar se?" First of all, they are trafficked. They brought from the by the agent. When you ask them, "Why have you come?" School nahi hai na wahan pe. School mein ham log gaye the, lekin nahi acha laga. To ham log yahan pe aaye. Aur kuch humko lagta hai ki ham kuch hunar sikhe, wapas jayenge. And all these children are below the age of 14. Yeah. and they are all they all belong to mahadalit okay or they belong to muslims who are the most under resourced communities in bihar up rajasthan wherever they come okay now i'm just trying to i'm not trying to put a negative picture but i want you all to understand that this is this is the issue today yeah so when we say private school private school private schools you will always be i i don't think Faculty here will be surprised, but when you ask the municipal school teachers, "Aapke bache kahan jaate hain?" Many times I've told them. Now I tell them, "Don't put up your hands because you'll be embarrassed." Okay, so they all go to private schools. Why are you going to private schools? Me, no answers, and you are teaching in the municipal school, right? So these are some of the problems that we do have. Um, I will. Yeah, I'll come to this whole uh, teacher education. Can we go? Yeah, can we? Yeah. Ah, uh, one very very important aspect of all this is the learning crisis in um, India. Many of you may have read the report, which is called Annual Status of Education Report. It is called ASAR. It is every year brought out by Pratham, hmm? and it. it is the largest survey which is done by for about 6 lakh children are tested in the rural area with a very simple tool whether the child is reading or writing yeah and it is not done by pratham it is done by people like you it is done by uh, postmen it is done by st workers or it is done by universities hmm? or it is done by diet principals etc etc so it is a people led survey hmm? and this is done every year in month of jan and it is done in such a way that all the states come to know what are the what is the learning outcome in their states we started this about almost 15 years back and two year a uh, first three four years i think people are very upset with us and one of the reason you will be interested to know is that in our first year of survey 2007 uh kerala came third in the literacy uh, levels okay and bihar was somewhere on top okay so they were very upset with us and kerala government of course said ki humko pratham nahi chahiye aap hamare sath you don't work with us you can imagine no because everybody's self esteem gets a little affected same thing happened with maharashtra maharashtra said we don't want to Hmm? and why we don't want you because children are not doing well and you are saying it here and maybe your sampling is wrong maybe the people you are not trained so there were lots and lots of discussions on this and if you read the papers regularly and if you watch january as a month from january to next december asar is discussed all the time but fortunately i think what we have achieved is that it has changed the discourse of education in india and i i would like to take this credit because we really changed the discourse in india and also internationally what we convince the government is every year we did this uh, uh, uh this particular report and we told the government that it is not about enrollment it is not about children not attending school it is not about teachers okay is not also about infrastructure in the last 10 years the infrastructure is much better okay earlier there were no toilets if there were toilets there was no water but now in the last 10 years 
there is a lot of improvement in the infrastructure there are toilets for women there are toilets for girls there is a teachers room there is a music room a lot of infrastructure has been given but what happens is actually the learning is not taking place the children are not learning and i have not really uh, i'm not giving you details about this but majority of the children you know in many states when you go to them and say which standard you are in and they say we are in fifth standard or in sixth standard and we give them the tool is very simple the tool is second standard okay the assessment tool it is it's a very short tool we want to assess what are the reading levels this is not a, it is not a writing test it is only read hmm? because if you do it on a skill 6 lakh you can't do a writing test also so we have done that when you ask a third when you ask them to read almost 39% 49 40% who are in standard 5 today do not know second standard text so you can imagine the learning crisis so you have a class of 50 in you know and they are studying in fifth standard and you have half the class not knowing what is being taught to them because they have not yet gain the competency of second standard text right so our effort has been to tell the government and to tell people like you and everybody that make the foundation strong and if the foundation is not strong children are not going to learn because you can imagine if a, if a child cannot read how can he do geography what can he do in science and you will be surprised about maths in covid everybody was talking about that children have regressed bachon ko kuch aa hi nahi raha hai bacche bhul gaye hai true but to your sub to our surprise what happened is when we did that same test everywhere we were surprised to see the children had retained maths you know they knew maths much better than language tell me why one of the reason is that in maths is more functional you know life mein hum log you know dukan mein jaate hain something we do in the house so children are still you know at least mental maths is going on nobody is teaching them but language they were completely deprived of there was no school there were no books children's reading had stopped right so there was this big regression in children that children who were able to read were not also able to read even that what they were able to read but on the whole this learning crisis that we have in the country uh one has to fight it and as pratham we are trying to uh look at it in a way that uh how do we really improve this and it is not only about pratham but it is also with the government before i go to what we are doing um i just want to tell you how there are changes in the last 10 years in people whom we are working with if you see parents nowadays are aspiring poorest of the poor are saying ki mere bacche ko school jana hai hmm? uh, i used to work uh, you mentioned prerna vidya mentioned i we had started this project in with uh, prerna some years back and prerna as you know we worked in the red light area okay so they were prostitutes and what we wanted to do is to work with their children because some of you might know that children are given opium or children are given tranquilizers so that the children don't disturb the mothers during their business hours which is generally in the night theek hai so looking at them and the mothers said and you you'll be surprised on this also mother said ki hum log is dhande mein aaye hain we have come into this profession okay but we don't want our daughters or my son to get into the same profession hmm? simple and some of the boys who were there fifth you know 10 year olds and all were also used by the customers to bring beer to bring you know cigarette leke aao so it's a it's a part of that entire what i would say ecosystem okay and i can't say it is bad or good so we said okay 
सो दीज मदर्स केम टू आज एंड वी ओ वेरी हैप्पी की यू नो इनको स्कूल में डालेंगे so the mothers when they when they want wanted us to put them in school we went to the school which is close by and you know the admission form so the ma- teacher asked them naam kya hai so they were okay then they said kahan rehte ho so that address was given then they said you know bacche ka naam etc then the last question was father ka naam kya hai okay now father ka naam kya hai and teacher was not doing it purposefully okay there's a form so you have the father's name she was doing what is administratively correct right so as soon as she asked them and this happened some years back uh i was also stunned i had no response neither did those mothers have any response and i said oh god i was saying in my mind you know we came with such enthusiasm to put these 13 you know children in school now what's going to happen so before i could say anything or i could even plead with the teacher this woman who's a prostitute herself she said naam mein kya hai okay so i was i was like look surprised and said naam mein kya hai what what was what was trying to get so she said hindu mein na hamare mein bahut sare bhagwan hai lots of gods so ram hai mahadev hai shankar hai कृष्णा है तो किसी का भी नाम डालो ना एंड दिस इज नॉट अ मनगढ़ कहानी ओके दिस इज ट्रू एंड सो दो फिफ्टीन चिल्ड्रन व नेम्ड आफ्टर ऑल द गॉड्स दैट यू कैन थिंक ऑफ ओके सो वन इज यू नो मनीष राम पवार वन इज यू नो गणेश समथिंग एंड आई वॉज लाइक स्टंट आई वॉज ऑड लाइक लुकिंग एट दैम यू नो but i am telling you this is that sometimes people like us who are professionals who have so much of knowledge and we think we have so much of wisdom you learn from people who are facing day to day issues and they come with the most practical solution and those children were put in school but we didn't stop there we went to the education secretary went to the education officer and i said you know this is just an example but there are so many street children often who don't have parents so if the school wants right to education to happen to every child some waving of the form should be there so we were lucky that the education officer and the then secretary who was very very fond of professor ram joshi uh, who is no more kumud bansal uh, who has also come to you to talk she was you know we worked very closely with her and um, she was also pratham trustee uh, founder trustee so basically she said fine farida do it and she sent a circular to everybody that from now on you won't have compulsorily both the parents names you have only one pair and you see the revolutionary decision that she made then she took a risk but now country wide whether it's on your passport whether it is anywhere else even when you are separated or you are divorced and you are a single parent they are not asking you to put husband's name that's your choice now yeah so what i'm also telling you is that these small you know this is these are micro examples okay which convert into policy changes but you have to have an eye for it and you have to actually not be happy yeah yeah i put 15 children in school but what do you do with the scale and what we do with the other children so you have to always look at whatever you are doing how is does it have a policy impact and i am giving you this example also to tell you that the poorest of the poor the worst of the parents in our language want their children to get educated so it is not that the parents do not want their children to get educated and Yeah, just tell me when I have to stop because I can go on the whole day. <laughs> Ten minutes, five minutes, what? Ten. Okay, I think more this you know, but just to give you a policy perspective that all these are issues. Mm-hmm. But we've had some good policies which have come our way in the country. We have the Right to Education Act, which I'm not going to get into, which I'm sure you know, and this allows you. 
allows every child to have not only a right to schooling but right to learning and the act the way it is it's a very beautiful piece of document some of it is implemented well some of it is not implemented well because all of us are not fully oriented yeah uh, and right to education is also talking about non discrimination it is also talking about you know no rejection and therefore we are talking about equality which is what i think all of us are aspiring yeah with it came national education policy of 2020 which all of us are talking about some of us have been on that committee and we been able to influence the content of the um, uh, national education policy and that is converted into implementation what you must be hearing all the time is foundational learning and what we call is nipun bharat nipun bharat is that make every child proficient in reading and writing by 2030 so as pratham we find it very very satisfying that all our work for last 15 years on the learning outcomes is really being realized into this policy and once again when vidya said that i do i am the leader here i am the leader in pratham but I have my co-founder Madhav Chavan. I have a CEO called Rupini Banerji. So it's a huge team. It's whole army of seven thousand people. Hmm? So when the, when when we when I when you say it's not I but it is we, hmm? and I'm happy personally because when I when we founded the organization, our dream was every child, and I think this particular uh, policy will now help us to look at every child hopefully. you know one man always dreams uh what just one or two highlights of this nipun bharat which is which is also helpful for all of you to understand is that we are, they are talking about children between say below 14 but they are also talking now children definition is now changed to 18 other highlight is that they are talking about nipun bharat in such a way that all children should know basics there's a huge emphasis now on preschool so what they are saying is that you must have preschool for 2 years outside the outside the formal school and if possible the anganwadis and the icds should come as a part of the school and then follow it by first and second so they really talking about 5 years of continuum which was never done and i think it's a very useful um aspect of this policy so that children when they go in first standard as first generation learners they don't go with a empty slate but that they learn before they even get into school so the school readiness anganwadis preschool instead of just having a few preschool can we have it for all over the country like we have the icds program and then how do you really correlate it with standard 1 and 2 long way to go miles to go but it's there in the policy and once it's in the policy and if it's in the budget some of us can then advocate only policy is not enough we need to see it in the matter of paisa right otherwise policy is every day one one scheme is being announced nowadays you know that but there is no money there so it's empty promises sometimes but this is important and they are they are also talking about that they have given a timeline of 2030 which is again a good thing because whatever you do you also have what what is called is the sustainable development goal that we all talk about so what has happened actually in the entire education framework is that emphasis on primary education emphasis is also on the secondary education so you know that the board exams 10th standard lot of you know now that the curriculum has been changed there are lots of options and higher education there are still some lacunes there are some gaps in the higher education but we will not talk about it today but there are people who are working on it yeah next yeah uh, now when i was talking about um, uh, you know uh, who are the left outs no left behind and i think some of you will be interested 
because I was told there are also special educators in this group that there are children who are disabled <coughs> or who are children with some kind of special needs who are excluded from the mainstream. And you will see not only in Mumbai, but in, in India, they are now talking about uh, the population between 5 and 19 not attending school. And these are children who are out of school because they cannot attend school. And the reasons are, I've given them, but I'm not going to read out. One of the most important reasons, and we are working with it, is no identification, early identification in children who are disabled or who have special needs. Many of our parents, either there's a mode of denial, ki mera bachcha theek hai, kuch nahi hua, you know, aad saal ka ho jayega, tabhi baat karega, because somebody tells them, ya waha darga pe jau, ya yaha pe mandir pe jau, maha pe ek murgi do, yaha pe das naril do, to bachcha padega. This is generally, and people have this denial ki, you know, it's a stigma, ki how can I have a child? Okay, there's also ignorance in many parents because if you have one child who's mentally challenged, and if you tell the parents ki dusra bacha, you know, postpone or do not have a second child, they get very upset and they say, Upar wale ki den hai, to hum log kaise kar sakte? So, you have these challenges in India when you're talking about going to the moon. Yeah, you had fascinating G20 in Delhi and on the other side of the spectrum you have this huge masses of people who are still ignorant of why is my child a special child or my why my child has this kind of a disability and there's a huge awareness required now in India today for these children okay and uh, also many 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 a times uh, in the in the in the school they don't have access or they don't have infrastructure. Every school has a ramp. Yeah, mostly. But ramp is not enough, na? Only. You need other things for a virtually, uh, for a visually blind or for a hearing impaired. You, you need different uh, aspects. But one is not looking at that. And there is a whole debate between special schools, inclusive education, integrated education, Okay, now we will not get into that because we don't have the time. But what is important is how do you understand that these children are mainstreamed? And how do you help them to get mainstreamed in your general education? Which by which I mean that how will all our teachers, for example, in a municipal school, <coughs> there are 1249 municipal schools in Mumbai. When I started off, they had 7 lakh children. Now they have two. 2.3 black children because they're all now going to private schools. Teachers are about 19,000. They're all general education. Now, if we were to train these teachers, should we not train these teachers to understand that these children have special abilities? It's not a, it's a, you know, as Modi ji calls it, divyang, right? But like we say, they have some special abilities. So why don't we recognize them? But we are not. And you will be surprised that you, when you go to the slums, you know, there are parents who have children <coughs> whom they can't, can't even lift now because some of them can't walk. The school is on the third floor. How can the child go to school? We don't have vehicles. So there are a number of problems, but I, I'm, I'm sure we are all working, working on it. And of course, the classroom environment is not the best. Okay. Coming back, coming to can we go to the next? Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about Pratham, but what I just want to say that Pratham as an organization is just now concentrating on 0 to 3, 3 to 6 year old, 6 to 14 year olds, and then vocational skills. Yeah. We can go to the next. Yeah. Uh, and what we really believe is, and I'm sure you will be with me on this, that you fix the curriculum and not the teacher. We always blame the teacher that the teacher is not doing this, teacher is not doing that. But if you study the curriculum, see how difficult the curriculum is. 
children cannot really cope with the curriculum children cannot cope with the textbooks can we be can we make some changes in the textbook not only in terms of the content but also in terms of gender in terms of what is said in the textbook even today you will find some of the school uh, textbook showing <coughs> that come in marathi ki kamla chaha kamla chaha kar okay kamla make tea ओके आणि रमेश तू खेळायला जा तू अभ्यास कर इव्हन टुडे वी हॅव दीज काइंड ऑफ टेक्स्ट बुक्स सो व्हॉट आर द मेसेज इज युअर गिव्हिंग सो इट्स नॉट ओनली द कॉन्टेंट विच इज टू बी कॉन्टेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ अकॅडेमिक बट हाऊ डू यू ब्रिंग इन व्हॅल्यूज हाऊ डू यू मेक अ इन्क्लुझिव्ह कॉन्टेंट विच इज ऑल्सो जेंडर सेन्सिटिव्हिटी सो यू यंग पीपल हॅव लॉट्स लॉट्स टू डू वी हॅव डन अ बिट ओके so the future is in your hand <laughs> and basically also mainstreaming these uh, disabled children or we are talking about special uh, children and what we believe as pratham is that you mainstream these children you can have special schools for very severe cases but those who are educable do not label them but have your curriculum in such a way that it is it kind of mainstreams these children so that these children don't feel that there are somebody some weird children here in the classroom which is generally the mindset of teachers and many of us who are sitting with these children which we need to change next yeah um in go to the next yeah okay uh what we have done basically uh, always as pratham uh that we work on inclusive education but uh, we have always believed ever since we are we have started that uh, uh do not replicate uh, do not substitute the government we are, i always feel work with the government work with the system do not substitute the government do not take schools and say i am adopting this school okay do not give teachers there and say i am giving teachers no the let the system work let this because they the government has the maximum resources maximum power so if they decide that they have to do inclusive education if they decide all children will be in school with one signature everybody will be in school but it is the entire thing of political will how do you advocate political will which is for the children and therefore in pratham we believed that do not substitute but rather supplement and do simple solutions you know don't make into a big uh, rocket science children are not learning say it how will they learn say it so that anybody right from a chana wala to a paper wala to all of us can understand that my child is not uh, learning and is able to then question the teachers ki bachcha usko kuch aata nahi hai but he they must know what to ask so we have always done simple scalable replicable models yeah we can go to the next yeah and also if you see for higher education i have purposely brought this that uh, there is hardly any children getting into higher education who are differently able so you can imagine what's happening again yeah but next yeah now as a, as a university as students what do you do okay and how do you really uh, reimagine this education how do you really work so first of all i feel as students of sis or students of any university uh, they are always um, what we say as ambassadors for education when you say ambassadors of education means like somebody comes from boston somebody comes from california students come to us and we also find it difficult to train them because sometimes um, english problem hota hai but i always encourage students to come because they become your ambassadors because they then talk about pratham they talk about children they talk about india in a proper uh, proper way uh, i also feel that you as sis have a huge alumni network very often i hear people saying are i was in sis one of my very close colleague who's working with me right now somebody called sneha she has been in sis for 2 years some time back and yesterday when i told her she said oh you're going to my college okay so 
basically you have a huge network why don't we use that alumni network to do something i'm not saying go on the street and you know have a morcha but what we can do what you can do on your individual basis to make these children also part of the mainstream i also feel that in the campus like sndt or uh, sndt sis tiss all these big campuses whether we can be much more inclusive in our approach much more diverse okay because we have different castes we have different religions and i'm sure sis has that value so i'm not going to lecture you on that but basically i think we need, we need to maintain that other last thing i would say about students like you we do researches we do surveys we do studies many very often these studies or researches are not relevant okay because i want to do something on women i do it hmm? but is it really connecting to the outside world okay is it really connecting to the social realities what impact will your research have is a question you must ask yourself that it is not a research for marks it's not a study only to keep in the shelf but and it's not only about sis it's all about every higher education so more relevance and i think that will contribute and if you do it i think the vision of professor ram joshi will be completely fulfilled because he always connected higher education with primary education and much more with early childhood education i want to end this my uh, my presentation by showing you this visual i think it is quite i don't have to say much okay you have equality so you have access of for every child true we have reached that but by giving access the child in the wheelchair still cannot see the cricket match which is going on for example okay or whatever is going on that side so what do you do so you are trying to bring him to the level of the other children by giving him a stool or something which will uplift him hmm? it's very symbolic but you have to give him some scaffolding so that it is not only equality but it is also equity and i think that is what we need to aspire sky is the limit and i'm going to say that we have every resource necessary to provide access to education for every child on the planet we just need to commit to enabling it so commitment passion it's not about money i can tell you that not at all it's not about that you know we need lots of resources no you need some good ideas simple ideas and you must see how people will take these ideas and will fly with these ideas and in pratham we've always believed that let's lots of flowers bloom because pratham is a soch it's an idea that every child must get quality education and the child should be protected thank you so much two video clippings but looking at the time maybe you can screen it some other time uh, very short two video clippings which is showing you the parent showing you the parent engagement and also about little bit about disability but maybe you can see it on your own is that okay yeah thank you any questions in here
thank you so much kavita and uh, thank you uh, farida ma'am respected dignitaries esteemed guests members of the ram joshi family who have joined us virtually today our esteemed uh, vice president uh, shri seturaman sir and member of the managing council shri vishwanathan sir our principal dr uma shankar who was with us and our beloved director dr vidya satish and uh, all our students as well as viewers who are virtually witnessing this event on youtube today it is with deep reverence and a profound sense of gratitude that we conclude the 24th ram joshi memorial lecture here today this event would not have been possible without the support and presence of each and every one of you one of you here today we extend our heartfelt thanks to our esteemed speaker of today's event dr farida lambe who is the co-founder and trustee of pratham for gracing us with her wisdom and insights by way of an enlightening lecture on the topic is education a right to schooling or a right to learning too she touched upon a lot of aspects with regard to the students uh, who are uh, unseen and also uh, a lot of things which were uh, touched upon by my colleague uh, ms kavita right from uh, the disconnect that children have although they've registered in the school uh, the inability to attend because of either socio economic reasons or because of the coping in, uh, incapability of these students and uh, she also said that uh, we as the educational fraternity need to start with a micro change in the method of our approach and only this is going to lead to uh, encompassing everyone in every arena into the educational fold and this is what her organization is also working towards and uh, your lecture today has been indeed illuminating and it has been a tribute uh, to professor ram joshi whose legacy continues to inspire us all to this very day and uh, many people here have uh, been touched upon by professor ram joshi in some way or the other uh, although they might not have been physically touched upon by him by way of this lecture every year i think uh, we are gathering a lot of insight into the work that he's done with us and uh, a special mention to the uh, must be made to the organizing committee because uh, your meticulous planning dedication and commitment has uh, fructified in the seamless execution of today's event your efforts have not only honored the members but students and attendees and uh, may i also thank our uh, students and attendees because uh, your presence here today is testament that you too want to partake in professor ram joshi's uh, teachings for us and as uh, ms farida ma'am clearly said that uh, he had envisaged a uh, way a long time back that uh, we need to bring the foundational literacy in at par because he said that is the stage which designs the future generation or higher education i'd like to quote the true measure of success lies not in personal achievements but in the positive impact we have on the lives lives of others and this is a statement that is very true to professor ram joshi it's a statement which is testimony to the fact that professor ram joshi had on the lives of many that he touched in his journey as professor and vice chancellor and also a principal with the sies college thank you all for being a part of this uh, memorable event and a special thanks goes out to all members of the ram joshi family who are here with us virtually uh to mention mrs uh, joshi who is uh, with us uh, virtually watching us on youtube ms anupama and uh, shri vidyanand joshi your virtual presence and support have added a profound and personal touch to the occasion and also you have shared with us your beloved relatives legacy 
As we leave here today, let us carry forward the ideas and the vision of Professor Ram Joshi because he stood for knowledge and may his legacy continue to guide us and inspire us in the future and lead each of us to excellence and success. Once again, thank you to one and all present here and also participants who have joined us on YouTube for being a part of this significant and memorable occasion. And uh, may I now request all of you to please stand for the national anthem. Bharat Mataki. Thank you, everybody.